paradox of our time is that humanity is becoming simultaneously more unified and more fragmented. Metaphysical elevation took us away from any place in direction of its celestial plus ultra. But it has also generated a radical delimitation of a human world towards any outside, producing an asphyxiating world without margins or remainder, synchronized with the inanimate skies of metaphysics. In this untemporal time of total dislocation, any border between war and work, art and waste dissolves in the air. Unified and globalized, however, the earth is not pacified. Instead, we are at this point where, deprived of any support, we can finally leave the orbital movement of thought that for centuries has gravitated around the same founding nucleus. To launch ourselves out of the circle of recognition, to awaken in thought forces that are not those of recognition. Is there is something rather than nothing? It is because the discard has always exceeded the homogeneous. Well, we often hear it said that the severity of the global environmental calamity demands new ways of thinking, bold models and innovative solutions. But the terms used to describe the current situation in professional and general public circles alike are by and large the same as they were in the second half of the 20th century. Pollution, waste, or contamination silently presuppose that the pristine state of the environment is the norm from which these are but temporary deviations. No doubt these words have different semantic tinges. Waste is more economic. Pollution and contamination allude to hygiene and evoke the ideal of purity. The discourses they're embedded in fail to take into account the overwhelming prevalence of microplastics in every ecosystem and in elemental milieu, or the way byproducts of industrial activity reshape the earth and its atmosphere. Words matter. The persistence of terms past their expiry date betrays the staying power of old modes of understanding that are no longer adequate. The silent presuppositions they carry along converge on the implicit idea that objectively measurable quantitative changes do not translate into qualitative alterations in the phenomena they operationalize from concentrations of CO2 in the air to average global temperature increases and the mass of human-made materials floating in the oceans. Ecological realities change at a faster pace than the frameworks devised for grasping them. Through prisms made the day before yesterday, we see yesterday's world at a moment, today, when that world is already drastically different and on the verge of disappearing. While engaging in a struggle against environmental degradation, it is therefore necessary to update our vocabularies and concepts for articulating this very struggle. The first step we must take is to challenge the kind of mindset in which purity serves at once as the absolute standard and the end goal of ecological theory and practice. The second is a more positive and creative step of coining a term and the corresponding conceptual infrastructure capable of reflecting the state of contemporary environment. What should our word for the element shaping world devastating natural artificial force be? the force that leaves a welter of marks on inorganic formations and sweeps through every ecosystem, becoming ingrained into and surrounding every organism. My wager over the past few years has been that dump is that word. When it comes to its scope, dump exceeds the limits of regional ontologies, that is to say of specific regions of being such as the psychological, the physiological, the economic, or even the ecological. In the 21st century, it is the name for being as such and as the whole, embracing all of the above dimensions. To ask what is a dump or what is it to dump is to inquire into the meaning of being at present, both as a noun and as a verb. The enormous quantities of dumped materials ranging from carbon emissions to pesticides 
and other toxins, from information to non-biodegradable garbage. These massive quantities of dumped materials breach makeshift differentiations between various spheres of being. In what is but the most recent update of the transition from quantity to quality in classical dialectics, the dumped triggers a chain of fundamental changes in everything and everyone on the path of its immense outpouring. Alongside quantity and quality, the categories of relation and modality mutate beyond recognition, thanks to the uncanny power of the dump. Relations are undone, their nets torn by the dumped masses. The modal categories of necessity, possibility, and existence itself are determined as though by a metamodality by the existence, possibility, and necessity of the dump. Climate change and species loss, genetic mutations and oncological illnesses, spent nuclear materials and big data are some of the multifaceted effects of the dump. While it alters the basic categories of understanding, the dump also interferes with space and time. Rather than merely occupy terrestrial, aquatic, and atmospheric spaces, it conditions the spatiality of space, the coordinates according to which what is above and below are mapped, the proportions between what is considered empty and full, the energy mass of matter's distribution. The dump's prevalence in space all the way to the cosmic vicinities of our planet, dotted with space junk, leaves no room for distinct places. The places it contains are equally placeless, shorn of their capaciousness, relatively homogeneous due to the masses of what is dumped there. And just as there is no space free of the effects of the dump at present, so there is no time without the dump's clutter, no time for a future separate from the extension of its influence beyond our today, and increasingly no time for a past that is not regarded through the dump's cloud, mostly of debris. To put it bluntly, the dump is a perverse, warped realization of age-old metaphysical desires to behold unchangeable reality, immune to any eventualities in the empirical realm, and orchestrating behind the scenes everything that takes place on the world's stage. The material instantiation, the material realization of these fantasies renders them nightmarish. Masses of data, emissions, and non-decomposable products are the epitomes of Plato's ideas, Aristotle's unmoved mover, Augustine's God, Spinoza's substance, Descartes' subject, Kant's thing in itself, and so forth, clogging the world and undermining its livability. The legacy of metaphysics inheres not only in philosophical texts, but also in the physiological and psychological, social and elemental, environmental and economic realities of the 21st century. That is why it is insufficient to deconstruct this legacy intellectually when its colossal residues persist all around and within us, molding whatever remains of the world and of worlds. Thank you.